today's video, we're going to be looking at five common mistakes made on the back end. Uh, so, if you feel that your back end can do with some improving, stay tuned. Okay, so what are we going to do is, because we've had a little bit of problems with the sound quality, because there's quite a lot of noise, and I don't have a specific uh, recording facility yet, I'm going to show you the swings, and I'm going to overdub. I tried to do them with the ball, but they didn't, it didn't work out quite so well, so I decided to do them without the ball. They're a little bit patronising in some ways because you think, oh, nobody does that. But the reality is that when you're playing, most of these things do happen. So if it seems a little bit patronising, I apologise. I'm not, I'm not trying to be patronising. Um, so as I said, I'll open it up and I'll show you the good with the bad. And then um, hopefully you can sort of see yourself and say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to improve. Okay, so here we go. This is the first one. Now, this is not watching the ball hit the strings. And I've mentioned this many times in other videos. And what you can see me doing here is a, a good technical swing, but my head is lifting up. It's as if I'm trying to follow the ball before I've hit it. Now, that's a very common mistake. You can't constantly look at the ball. Here's the view from the other side. I'm looking up. Obviously, this would have been much better with the ball, but it's actually quite difficult for me to hit the ball in a straight line without watching it. Now, you'll notice that I don't have particularly bad balance, but I know that if it were in a real match, I would be losing my balance. Now, this is what you should be doing. Hitting and watching the ball. Now, it might not seem like it's very different, but that fraction of a second that when I make contact with the ball, I keep my head still. I try to watch contact and hear the view from the other side. Now, I'm exaggerating. Of course, I wouldn't be you know, moving my arm and standing here for such a long time. But this is a practice where I really want to get into the habit. And you could do these. You could just do them so that you don't move your body afterwards very much. Head still. Here's the second one, breaking the wrist. Now this is a huge problem among many beginners. The first issue here is that initially you can make quite good contact with it. You can have quite a short swing. You can sometimes get the ball out of the corners. But in the long term, this is going to cause you more problems than it's worth. Here's the view from the other side. Breaking the wrist again. And you can see that that's actually quite a small swing. There's not much else wrong with it. I'm keeping my head still in this one. And I would imagine that as a beginner, I'm feeling quite confident at this point. I'm hitting the ball cleanly. I'm using my wrist like people tell me I should. But the reality is you shouldn't. Now, here's what you should be doing. Cocking the wrist and there's a slow motion, not wobbling the wrist at all. And here's from the other side. And you'll notice that my racket head remains open. That means that if I were to make contact with the ball, it would be moving upwards slightly. Whereas when you break the wrist, it doesn't do that. Now here's a quick demonstration why. Right, you'll notice that I'm dropping it from about hip height and I'm having to bend down to get it, and you'll notice the racket is wobbling. And I'm dropping it in different places. Now here, I put my foot on, foot on the racket. You can hear the sound that the ball makes, and you can see that it jumps up much higher. Any ball in the racket head means lo lo loss of solidity of the stroke. Imagine it at absolute extreme. The ball's coming towards you, and you do that. I mean, it's not going to happen like that. But you can catch it. I mean, you sort of see this. You know, the ball comes in and you can catch it. That's an extreme. Any wall makes a difference. Now, as soon as I put my foot on the, uh, the racket, it stops the, ball with the, the racket from wobbling, and the strings do the job. And that's really why professionals hit the ball so cleanly. Because when they hit it, it doesn't wobble unless they want it to. The moment you do this, you can see this happening. I bend my wrist, what's happening to the racket head? The racket head is wobbling. That's why this is so bad on the back end. Because when you come to hit it, you're effectively scooping. Any of the kinetic energy and the solidity has been lost. You are not maximizing your stroke. Keep the wrist caught and do this motion. The racket head is not moving in this plane. It's moving in this plane, but it's not moving. So when I make contact with the ball, it 
it's solid. And also, holding it like this means that it's less likely to move. Doing this, even if you have an incredibly strong wrist, there's going to be some loss of power. So that's why you shouldn't be doing this when you hit the ball. And if you, can't, if you make a comment and say to me, oh, but I saw one of the professionals do it, you are not a professional. You don't hit the ball six hours every day and have four arms so strong that you would not believe it. You're not one of those. I'm not one of those. You can't do what the professionals do sometimes. Sometimes it's good to emulate them, but some of the times when they do this, or they do this, you're not there. So, you know, in this case, don't do what they do. All right, now here's number three. Now this is your left hand, or of course your right hand if you're left-handed, in between you and the racket. Now, the actual swing itself doesn't look too bad, but what it does is it stops you from turning your shoulders. It gives you a feeling of limitations. Here's the view from the other side, hand in the way. I see this so often in beginners and lower club level players. It's in the way. It doesn't look too bad, but it's not good. You want to get their arm out of the way so it's not blocking you. You never see a professional do this. If that's what you, here's the good one. You want to keep it underneath. Now I'm exaggerating that follow through and I'm exaggerating the swing outwards, but what you will notice is that it, it gives me a chance to balance myself. Okay. Now if you need to, put your hand behind your back. It does limit the swing a little bit because the hand shouldn't, the arm shouldn't be there. And if you have to, hold your t-shirt. But what it'll do is it'll teach you to keep your hand out of the way. And here again, here's the good one. Keeping the head still. Here's the view from the other side. Here's the good one. Arm underneath. Balance. You can see that it's a natural movement. Balance. And don't worry about hitting your hand. Maybe you'll do that a couple of times at the beginning. But that's just because you're moving your arm too early. It happens naturally. All right, here's number four. Running on after you hit the ball. Now, without a ball, it doesn't look so, so good. And, of course, in a situation like this, it's, it's an exaggeration. But often that's what happens. Players don't have the leg strength. They don't have the balance and the control. And they just keep moving forward. And the huge problem here is that it stops you from hitting straight drives. Because what's going to happen? You're going to go running straight into the ball. So what do you do? You hit cross courts. So you're limiting yourself because of your technique. There you go. From the other side... I get on the right foot, but then I step one too more. One too many. I need to stop myself. I need to be able to control my movement so that I'm not running on, especially when I'm running to the front. That's what you should be doing. You should be stepping forward one step, hitting the ball, stepping back. Do not continue running afterwards. It causes you more problems. Here's the view from the other side. Step and hit. Now... I'm a believer in the follow-through should be the momentum to bring you back out of the shot. It's not always possible, but if you can develop that, it will be really helpful. All right, here's the uh, last one, which is, I'm exaggerating the follow on here, but you hit it and then you stare at it. You should be hitting and moving straight back. You hit and you stare. Where is it going? Where's it gonna go? What do I need to do? Where's my opponent? You don't need to be watching. Here you go from the other side. You hit and you look up. No. And you keep staring at it. No, you should not be doing that. You need to be hitting and then moving straight back. Do not hit and stare. Right. From the other side. Hit and come back. And watch when I'm coming back. Hit and come back. Now I'm not looking up because there's no ball, but... I'm not waiting to see what happens. Hit and come back. That's better. Hit and come back. Don't wait for the ball to go somewhere and start staring at it. Hit it and get out of the way. Okay, so there you go. Five common mistakes made on the backhand. The first one was a general one in the sense that it's made on the forehand, whereas the other things can be more specific. Uh, so let's summarize. Watch the ball hit the strings. Two. Don't bend your wrist. Three, don't put your left hand or your left hand in your right hand in the way. Get it out of the way. Four, don't run on. Make sure you stop. Five, don't stare at the ball. Actually, you should be moving back to the team faster than to the ball. 
You only need to move to the ball at the required speed, but you should be getting back to the team as fast as possible. So that's it. Five common mistakes. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've benefited from it. Thank you for watching. And if these videos are, are of use to you, please consider supporting me on Patreon. And remember, do something every single day for your squash. See ya.